It's a bit imposing to know he comes from a long line of witch doctors. Something happened before, and I just don't get it. While I was talking with Knife, Kai called me by my name, but I'd swear I'd never mentioned it. I'll go ask him about it. Excuse me for bothering you, Kai. Aloha, Brian. But how do you know my name? Uh, you mean you never mentioned it? Not as I remember. Well, I, I must have heard it around town, brah. That's funny, because I just got to this island. Welcome, then. Do you plan on sticking around, brah? No way. I'm just passing through. Or more like I just dropped in by chance. No, stay as long as you want, brah. I like it when you Malihini come to live here. As long as you don't make noise and you let me let me meditate in peace. There's fewer and fewer of us who speak Hawaiian, though. And it's sad to see the traditions disappear. I bet you don't even know that Mala, the name of the island, means garden. I'd love to learn Hawaiian, but I have no time to waste. Hang loose, brah. Nothing in life is worth running away. First, you have to ask yourself about the mana'o and things. What they truly mean. And the best way to do that is to lay down and take a load off for a while. Darn, the main reason I came was to ask you a few questions. Whatever you want, brah. Do you know if there's any way into the military camp without being seen? Not a one, brah. Those soldiers are as wa'awa'iki as they seem. They set up around the Tiki Temple, and that place is practically impenetrable. I've heard you're a surfing hero even though you're missing a leg. No big deal, brah. People who don't think exaggerate all the time. Lots of talking, lots of hurrying, and little meditating. People should spend more time lying in a hammock. Plus, if that shark hadn't gnawed my leg off, nobody would talk about me. It must be hard to live with a prosthetic leg. Maybe at first. Until you find someone missing the opposite leg who has the same taste in shoes as you. So just imagine. I'm saving a fortune. What a faux pas, that shark mess. Not as much as you'd think. Since then, I look at things from a much calmer perspective. And I appreciate certain things I wasn't interested in before. I got my parents' house back and moved into it. I took Knife in as a student to convey my knowledge to him, and I started to study my own island. Its past, its animal life, its customs. But mainly it helped me discover my true calling. See... I'm meditating. I'm curious about your peg leg. It's a leg made of flexible black metal, especially for athletes. But I don't think you can see it, brah. Nice kid koala stole it from me this morning. The little rugrat was playing with the sand, and I guess he used it as a shovel. Who knows where he hit it? Getting back to what we were discussing... According to Lokelani, your grandpa was a witch doctor. Nani koki, Lokelani, huh? Yeah, my grandpa and my great-grandpa before him was the island's official kohuna and official witch doctor of the poultry god. His specialty was bringing poultry shop chickens back to life. Is it true that if a bird dropped dead, your grandpa could revive it? That was his specialty as a kahuna. He was called Kini Papa Moa, which means something like king of the sick poultry. He was so famous, they showed him on TV around the world. Until the National Bird Lovers Association denounced mistreatment of our fine feathered friends. And he was never allowed to revive a bird again. Then he started learning Reiki to use as a hangover remedy. But he never seemed to be very good at it. Maybe it's because he only had one hand. I guess you must know a thing or two about witch doctoring. My grandfather would always take me to his Hawaii. His ritual hut, which is where he would teach me everything a good kahuna should know. Sharks are the spirits of our ancestors. To revive a bird, add a bit of this and a dash of that. Do this, do that. So, your great-grandpa was a witch doctor too? Yeah, bro. They say he was a specialist in hearing the future through the sound of waves. Though I've also heard he was born without one of his ears. What does Nani Koki mean, uh, referring to Lokilani? Pretty much the same as Hilo Hilo. But Lokilani is much more than that. You gotta admit that that Kio Kio has turned into one real Huilao. 
I'm just saying that cause that nice fat manu she has and that incredibly uli uli pair of pekekeu get my mind to think of nothing but lele, lele and more lele. I'm not sure but that sounded a bit gross. Why? It's just that the girl has turned into a true pet fanatic which is just cause of that big fat parrot she has. With that incredibly wide pair of wings that get my mind to think of nothing but flying, flying, and more flying. What did you think I meant, bro? Me? Nothing. But I still don't know what it means if you say Lokelani is Nani Koki. Heck if I know. Oh yeah, I think it means the same thing as when Knife says she's a hot babe. Or something like that. Maybe we should talk about witch doctoring some other day. All right, bro. I'll just keep strolling around the island. Aloha kaua, Brian. I'm just gonna keep sl meditating for a while. Why didn't I think of that before? If the Rugrat has been using the prosthetic leg as a shovel, it may be buried near the turtle. Here it is. It's just the way Kai described it. According to Knife, his little offspring is inside. Gives me the heebie-jeebies. All right, I'm sure Knife was exaggerating a bit. How could a cute little boy be so evil? Look at him, just an innocent child playing with his console. I'll go talk to the cute thing. Hello, koala. Want to chat with Uncle Brian? Well, I'll take that as a yes. Don't you know how to talk yet? Well, this is just what I needed. Getting this kid to speak is gonna cause more blood, sweat, and tears than it did with Joshua. He doesn't seem to have anything I need anyway, though. I can't see the screen, but from the sound of it, that game isn't very modern. No, only the bad guys in movies steal toys from children. That toy looks like a superhero from the comics. Brown Lantern? No, no, it, it was Green Lamp. Well, it was some light with some color. I couldn't say which, but I saw a dinosaur in a movie that was like totally the same. It must have been Toy Park. Or wait, Jurassic Story. That toy looks like a superhero from the comics. Brown Lantern? No, no, it, it was Green Lamp. Well, it was some light with some color. say people exaggerate when they say what a troublemaker he is. He looks quiet to me. Okay, let's try again. Your father says you're a miniature lunatic. No, that just seems to amuse him. I bet you really know your way around this island. Have you ever snuck into the military camp? Man, I'm seeing the dumbest things. Why won't you talk? Cat got your tongue? I've got nowhere. I bet you want to be a ventriloquist when you grow up. Oh no, I got that backward. The one who talks is the person, not the dummy. Who do you love more, mommy or daddy? Of course, since your dad is a space case, this is a waste of time. I should just leave him alone. Yep, looks like there's nothing to be done here.
I'd like to talk with the colonel again. Again? You're lucky I'm so friendly. Anyone else would have sent you packing. Don't take your eyes off him, Felton. Leslie, that civilian from before wants to talk to the colonel again. All right. Felton, accompany the civilian into the colonel's tent, as you order. Leslie, this is the guy who wants to have a word with the colonel. One moment, my colonel. Thank you, Felton. You, come here, please. Mr. Uh huh. I've taken note, my colonel. Your name? Brian Basco. Well, Mr. Basco, wait here. Mr. Uh, what's his face? Wishes to speak with you, my colonel. Who? Uh, tell him I'm asleep. Flower pot. But he can hear you speaking right now, my colonel. I must be speaking in my sleep, flower pot. No, daddy, you're more of the snoring type. Flower pot, that memory of yours is worse than a senile old general's. Get it through that thick skull of yours that there are no mommies or daddies in the army. Get over here a minute. I need to explain something. And pull those shirt tails right out of your pants. You look like a mama's boy. Look here, Lester. Why do you think I call you Flower Pot? To belittle you? No. It's such an outlandish surname that nobody will suspect it's fake. If the troops knew I sired a dim-witted boob like you, they'd lose their confidence in me, and I'd be shafted. You get it, son? Well, if I could think of something that would work... No. Poor Lokelani. Lucky thing Leslie writes down all the orders in there. Well, if I could think of something that would work... Better not. That would be a bit fishy. Looks like whoever hung it there had certain artistic ambitions. Otherwise, he'd have put a piece of scotch tape on each corner, as logic would dictate. One other thing, what was that about releasing some girl? You're two-timing mommy, aren't you? What I do or don't do in this camp is none of your business. Out of my sight, flower pot. You can come in, mister, whatever you're called. Thanks. I see you enjoy ticking me off. Answer. What are you doing on my island? The truth is, I came to see whether I could pick up that waitress at Luana Beach. That's a lost war, son. From the lieutenant colonel to the latrine scrubber, all my men have tried. But that lady is the toughest coconut to crack in the Pacific. What about you? Have you tried? Well, of course I tried to pick her up. And she's a good kisser, by the way. Some flunky civilian gallivanting around right in front of my troops? Go tell that story to someone who'll believe it. I tried, but she's in love with some one-eyed soldier. Won't even pay attention to me. I can't believe it. Another man. Well, just follow my orders. Tell her I'm the sensitive type. That I like to take strolls in the evening, candlelit dinners at night, and the sweet smell of napalm in the morning. All right. I'll talk with the waitress, if you tell me where you're keeping my friend. You like a nice and dirty war, I see. Well, careful with me, boy. You see this cigar? It causes plenty of pain if stuck in the wrong orifice. I'll tell her, but I think you'd better forget the napalm and use a nice compliment instead. 
You're right. She may be too young to hurt of Napalm. Tell her I fell in love with her. The minute I laid eyes on that great pair of... Nah, that won't work either. I'll come up with something else. There's something else I wanted to tell you about that waitress. You don't mean to tell me you've hit a home run with her, do you? Well, if you tried, she probably used her don't ask, don't tell policy on you. You're getting a little cocky, civilian. Don't you think I was rejected? I'm just following a long-term strategy. Laying siege on her rear guard without taking my eyes off her front lines. I don't want to talk about that girl. I don't even think she's attractive. Either you're lying or you're dumber than I thought. Anyway, I still don't know what you're doing on my island. I'm waiting for Professor Pierre Pignon. The professor's arrival is a military secret. How the heck do you find out? Actually, he told me himself, because we're cousins. He just called me on the phone. You sure about that? What'd you say your name was? Pignon. Uh, Francois Pignon? At your service. Your cousin didn't tell you about his mission here, did he? Yeah, but I forgot what he said. Could you refresh my memory? I'm the high commander here, so I can do whatever wets my whistle. And it just so happens, I don't feel like refreshing your memory. Yeah, he told me something about this, that, and the other, and this thing with this guy, and, and something or other about uh, some whatchamacallit, and those thingamajigs hanging around this something or other, and uh, with what's his name? I see. A master bluffer. I suggest you keep away from the poker table. Hey, there's something else, besides my cousin Pierre. Well, spill your guts. I don't feel like talking to you anymore. Just for the record, you're not leaving because you want to. You're leaving because I threw you out. Mosey along, civilian. I wish the guy with the machine gun wasn't aiming at me. I've never liked being the center of attention. I'd like to talk with the colonel again. Again? You're lucky I'm so friendly. Anyone else would have sent you packing. Don't take your eyes off him, Felton. Lasley, that civilian from before wants to talk to the colonel again. All right, Felton, accompany the civilian into the colonel's tent, as you order. Leslie, this is the guy who wants to have a word with the colonel. One moment, my colonel. Thank you, Felton. You. Come here, please. Mr. Uh-huh. I've taken note, my colonel. Your name? Brian Basco. Well, Mr. Basco, wait here. Mr. Uh... What's-his-face wishes to speak with you, my colonel. Who? Uh, tell him I'm asleep, flower pot. But he can hear you speaking right now, my colonel. I must be speaking in my sleep, flower pot. No, daddy, you're more of the snoring type. Flower pot, that memory of yours is worse than a senile old general's. Get it through that thick skull of yours that there are no mommies or daddies in the army. Get over here a minute. I need to explain something. And pull those shirt tails right out of your pants. You look like a mama's boy. Look here, Lester. Why do you think I call you Flowerpot? To belittle you? No. It's such an outlandish surname that nobody will suspect it's fake. If the troops knew I sired a dim-witted boob like you, they'd lose their confidence in me, and I'd be shafted. You get it, son? 